Hello, uh, Liam Horan here uh, from Sleenuak Careers and in this presentation I'm going to talk to you about some job searching tips uh, and this is in conjunction with National Support and Employment Week and this particular webinar uh, is a sister to the webinar with Greg Barry, uh, the chairperson of the Irish Association of Support and Employment who run the National Support and Employment Week and therefore um, the, the, the tone of the webinar for this this webinar with Greg and also the one with Geraldine Grady, which is targeted towards employers. Um, the, the backdrop is supported employment, the benefits of supported employment for job seekers and for um, employers. So that's the context. Um, however, I suppose when I talk about when I, when we talk about job searching tips, um, I'd like to preface it all by saying that you know the job searching is about proving to the employer you can do what they want you to do, okay? So it's much more about what you can do than what you can't do. If, there's so many, if there are a number of things you can't do, if there's an overwhelming number of things you can't do for the job, well then the job is not the right fit for you uh, and conversely, obviously, you're not the right fit for the job. So there's a presumption here in all of this that you're going for jobs that you can do, okay? And while I know some people, I've done quite a bit of work in this area, there are people who will say that the disability they, that they, they bring with them, uh, which is what um, gets them involved in support and employment in the first place, might be seen uh, by employers as uh, you know, a debilitating or a damaging part of their prospects. Um, and really I can't do much about that in this webinar, uh, nor would I try to because I'll go back to my earlier point. Um, it's about what you can bring to the employer. And once you kind of get away from that, you stop thinking from the employer's perspective. The employer is looking for somebody to do a job. Do you understand the job? Can you be the person to do that job? Focusing on that means that abilities rather than disabilities is what the employer is looking at. I'm very conscious that side by side, of course, there are certain reasonable accommodations that an employer may have to meet to uh, support the whole notion of supported employment. There may be job shadowing, uh, or sorry, job coach helping out. There may be specialist training. All of that, of course, is part of the next year as well. But for the purpose of this, I'd like to talk about sort of job searching tips that you should bear in mind, regardless of your situation, uh, and use these as best you can to complement um, your job searching, okay? And what I'm working off here is our job searching checklist. Uh, if you'd like a copy of this checklist in Word version, just email admin at sleenuatcareers.com and put the word job searching checklist in the in the subject line and we'll get it to you, okay? Um, and this is quite mundane in many ways, um, but job searching tends to be an accumulation of reasonable, logical things you do, not unlike training for the marathon. No point making one burst today and letting it drift for three weeks. It's the little things you do all the time, the little boxes you tick that will propel your job searching. So they're the obvious, the obvious few things, first of all. Do you have a good quality CV that highlights your skills in an effective way? Um, we have a CV check checklist as well that you'll be able to reference when you get the job searching checklist. It's, it's linked there. Um, you'd be surprised how many people have a CV that merely explains where they worked but does not in any way summarize and highlight their skills. The employer needs skills highlighted, needs them summarized, and they must be relevant to that employer's needs. Okay, uh, and that's the second point on the screen there in the box. Does it speak to the employer in question? It must speak to the employer in question. What works for employer A, what's really strong for employer A, will not be as relevant or strong for employer B. And you must tweak your CV every time to meet that. But before you even start tweaking, you must have a kind of a, a master CV that highlights your skills in full, okay? Uh, and our CV checklist will help you in that regard. This is not a CV talk, but the CV is a huge part of the job searching armory. Uh, despite the fact that technology threatens all the time to um, kill the CV, so to speak, it's still surviving, uh, if not it's not quite thriving as much as it once did because LinkedIn and places like that are threatening it, but it's still there. Have you a professional cover letter that you tweak every time as well? And again, really sending a, a, um, 
a CV and a cover letter to an employer should really feel like a surgical strike that you've gone in on that employer exactly. So if you're sending out the same CV 20 times a week without amendment and the same cover letter with just minor amendment, you're probably doing something wrong because what you're trying to, what you're hoping then is that the sales pitch you're making to every employer will work with all of them. Whereas in fact it should be tailored each time and that's what the CV is and the cover letter is. It's your, your personal brochure. Okay, so that's very important. Just applying for jobs, some, some tick boxes there again. Have you contacted recruitment agencies? Have you met recruiters? Have you set up job alerts on job sites? You, when you sign, sign up with job sites, you can put in your location, the kinds of jobs you're looking for, that kind of thing. Uh, and you get an email, then um, you can specify daily, monthly, weekly, uh, obviously more of, often than monthly if you're seriously job searching as a matter of urgency. Um, do you check your local papers, national papers, local radio, national radio? Um, do you have a job searching action plan written down, summarizing all of that, which could be Monday, I'll watch, I get this paper. Tuesday, I go on this website. Wednesday, I check the, this recruitment site. Thursday, I check this paper. Friday, I meet, meet three people for coffee to talk, talk to them about my job searching. Um, this, you need to have a plan because you never know which thing you do will be the one that brings value. And it's not full of eureka moments. It is a plod. It is a, it is a, it is a consistent doing of the thing, of the actions that gets you to get the job. Okay. Um, lovely stories, Eureka stories, few and far between, and you can't plan for Eureka. You can't plan for the blinding flash of light, so to speak. What you can plan for is your own pl action plan, what you do every day. Um, the next point there, are you a member of a jobs club? Um, very useful, proven uh, anecdotally, I would say, and more than anecdotally, particularly in one particular um, uh, established authority on this area, that jobs club, are the, it's the keep fit, it's the, it's the Weight Watchers model. It's peer pressure, for the want of a better word, uh, but peer reporting, peer checking in, peer support. So you said last Monday at the jobs club, you would go and see employer A and B because they have something going for you that might suit you. Did you do that? How did you get on? Did you follow up, etc.? That These are the things that jobs clubs do. What also happens, and I've seen this happen time and again in jobs clubs, is people start looking out for each other. In fact, some people are better looking out for, each, for other people than they are for themselves. So they start looking out for each other. Here's what I saw today that might suit you, okay? Register with the Department of Social Protection, all that kind of stuff as well. If there isn't a jobs club in your area, can you set it up? Okay. On social media, this won't be relevant for everybody, but have you a LinkedIn profile? LinkedIn is a huge part of recruitment nowadays. Is it up to date? Does it align with your CV? Uh, have you joined groups in your areas? One of the things about LinkedIn is when the employer or the recruiter looks at you, they should see you in the zone they want you in so you join relevant groups in terms of your sector your geographical area um i see a, a, a repetition there as well i think i'm just going to delete that now um so then uh do you follow companies that you, for which you'd like to work all of that's available on linkedin again some of the social media stuff not for everybody twitter is becoming more and more of a job searching place search for job theory jobs, careers, search for your own town, save your searches, check what's going out on out there, uh, and you, you'll often see stuff going on. What it can be very useful for is companies saying, I'm looking for somebody for three days next week, short-term stuff, and as we all know, that can be the way in the door. That can be the first step in the door, okay? Um, a thing you could look at is your own personal brand website, which if you're a graphic designer, for example, would showcase your graphic design work, show some pictures, JPEGs, images, maybe links to websites, that kind of stuff. You could be blogging on there, uh, not just showing either as well. If you're somebody with an interest in a certain sector, you could be blogging about that. Teachers use this uh, to talk about what they do in their classroom, the various resource material they use, that kind of thing. There are, do Googling around personal brand websites in your sector uh, and you'll find that that's useful. Here's one is very important. Do you let people know you're looking for work? Does everybody you meet at your local drama group, your local football club, uh, does everybody you meet know you're looking for work? 
Do all the influential people in your area know, know you're looking for work? Okay. Facebook again, you can use it for job searching purposes. Jobs will get advertised on there. Uh, events get advertised. Networking is very, very important. Um, you need to be networking, going to events, telling people what you do, what value you can bring, and ask them to keep an eye out for you. As you can see, these are all simple, relatively simple actions you can take. But by just doing it and doing it and doing it and telling people and talking about it, having your CV on your person all your time, all the time, letting people know what value you can bring, all of that's very, very important and can be what brings you over the line. More there on the personal brand website. Um, again, uh, you can also link it on your on your C list it on your CV as well. This is very important. Your networks, um, joining networks, be they the likes of the Open Coffee Club network around the country. There's an Inc. 60 in Mayo. There are various uh, business networks where not just business people can go, but other people who are looking for work because you meet. At these networks, you meet people who are moving and shaking, so to speak, making things happen in your area, uh, and they can be very good places as well. But again, the key thing I would say is do not say to somebody, oh, I'll do any kind of work. You must be able to get into your character, so to speak, very quickly, so that you know exactly what you're bringing to that person. So some other points as well. Have referees been told they might get a call? Tell them what. You know, sometimes people have multiple careers going on. They were this, you were, you know, you were this and you were that. Make sure that the referee knows what kind of jobs you're going for, so that they can structure their phone call response to that inquiry. Um, you know, because you don't tell them you're great at job A when in fact it's job B that you're going to be interviewed for. So keep your referees posted to what's happening. Keep your um, written references to hand as well. Get references as you go along through your career. They can be used very effectively. You can actually quote from references on your CV or amend them, attach them to your CV. References are a whole other world in terms of people have all sorts of opinions on them. Uh, some people think you should never put a referee's name on at all. It's not my view. I believe they're no burden to carry. And in particularly Ireland is a, is a word of mouth kind of society. Um, it can work quite well. But definitely... Let your referees know what's happening, that they may get a call. Um, don't let them be taking calls out of the blue without, uh, you know, just so they, they can be refreshed. And secondly, um, a, key, a key point uh, when it comes to uh, referees is that make sure that people you put down in your, on your, as your referees are good communicators who will take a call, who will speak well for you. So you can put in somebody other than the sales manager, or you can put in the general manager or vice versa, depending on who you feel in the company uh, last time out can give you our previous t previous in a previous company depending on who you feel can give you a good reference okay positive thinking it's not something i tend to lecture on i just flag it there um i suppose we all know the value of it we all know the negative of not attending to our sort of thought processes and making sure we keep ourselves as, as sharp as we can whatever you do for some people it's reading for others it's exercise for others it's amalgamation of both uh, and all sorts of things whatever you whatever you know works for you do you know your strengths? Uh, and this will feed into your CV. People too often ask or expect other people, i.e. recruiters, employers, contacts, to identify their strengths for them. Really, you should know them when you're talking to people, when you're writing your CV, you should be able to identify them very quickly. You might ask people in a one-off to give you their appraisal of your strengths. Uh, and in fact, if you e when you're emailing us, if you are emailing us, Put in core competency inventory as well in the subject line. I will send you something to help you with that. But you need to know your strengths. Do not expect others to talent spot for you. Do not expect employers in particular. Okay? Um, do you knock on doors? Do you actually go to employers and say, I can do a day, I can do a week, give me a chance if you ever need somebody? You'd be surprised how often in certain places, certain sectors, that can work. Okay? I include IT skills here because in my experience, uh, IT skills, and this is unscientific, it's my own observation of it, but IT skills can be very underdeveloped in the job seeker world. Uh, people who should be developing their jobs, their IT skills, uh, and particularly if you're not working, it's a good time to go and do some of that, you know. Um, because while IT may not be your job, it's almost certainly going to be part of your job. It's going to be the a vehicle of your job, so to speak, a conduit that you will use, okay. Um, actually, the core competency is listed there, uh, and the IT skills are listed there as well. Um, 
So recommended reading, What Colours My Parachute's a very good book for job seekers, really good book, thought-provoking, good fun, and challenges you as well. Lots of people say, I've done everything I can possibly do to get a job. Uh, and in my experience, that rarely stands up to full scrutiny. People do so much, a certain amount, but don't do enough. When you're writing your job searching plan, be ambitious, push yourself, challenge yourself. Say, I'm going to meet people. I'm going to ask people to put a word in for me. I'm going to look at more job sites than I would have before. I'm going to really push it out there. I'm going to train while I'm not working. Uh, I'm going to get my references together. I'm going to do everything that needs to be done to help me get a job. And the list I've given you there is by no means a definitive list. It's just an introduction. Uh, uh, and, ho you know, hopefully it will propel you to do more and that might might help you um, but you know the onus is on you to keep doing things that will propel your job searching okay I hope you find that useful as I said if you email me at admin at sleenewacareers.com and put some of those items in the subject line we'll get some more information to you thank you very much for joining us and best of luck in your job searching bye bye